Hello everyone and welcome to the SnowDDL introduction video. SnowDDL is a declarative style tool for object management automation in Snowflake. There are two different approaches to implementation of schema management tools. The declarative approach means that you define the final desired state of all objects and the comparison tool dynamically generates SQL for you. This approach is also idempotent and robust. It means that you can apply exactly the same config as many times as you like and you will get exactly the same result. Also, it makes it much easier to recover from errors. Uh, if something goes wrong, you can simply apply the same config once again and all errors should be fixed automatically. Also, it simplifies the development process greatly. A good example of declarative style tools is Terraform. The imperative approach is when you define series of change scripts in raw SQL, which must be applied in the correct order. It is very easy to implement, it is very flexible, but it is also very fragile and prone to errors. Uh, also, it is not very developer friendly. A good example of imperative style tools is schema change. SnowDDL is a declarative style tool which config is declared as directory containing subdirectories and YAML files. This is how it looks like in practice. And this is how the contents of individual YAML files looks like. SnowDDL config can be applied using basic command line interface or an advanced Python code. In this video, I will only talk about command line interface. It is very easy to install SnowDDL and start using it by issuing comments in your favorite terminal. So, you may ask, what makes SnowDDL different from all other tools? First of all, SnowDDL is stateless. Both Terraform and Schema Change rely on internal state to operate. This state is stored separately and it introduces one more point of failure. Potentially, this state might get incorrect, it may be tainted and it might be very hard to repair it. SnowDDL has no such things. Every time you launch the SnowDDL, it parses the config and compares it directly with metadata stored in Snowflake account. There is literally nothing to break. Lack of state has a lot of other positive implications from architecture standpoint. For example, it is very easy to revert changes. Before applying any changes, you should always push them to Git first, but after that, it makes it very easy to revert changes. You should simply reset your Git repository to any point in the past and then you run SnowDDL normally. SnowDDL will do its best to generate DDL commands dynamically to get back to the previous version of your config. One more unique feature of SnowDDL is that it supports alter column. In certain cases, it is possible to apply alter column and avoid full recreation of the table. It can save you a lot of time and money, especially if you want to do some trivial operation like adding a new column. SnowDTL provides a well-thought three-tier role hierarchy out of the box. This is the general overview of role hierarchy, which is described in documentation in great detail. On the first level, you have schema roles and warehouse roles, which are created automatically for each schema and each warehouse. Also, you have technical roles, which are created manually and are used to grant custom access to a small number of objects. On the second level, you have business roles, which combine multiple level one roles into single business function. For example, it can be a financial analyst, BI developer, it can be a dbt script, or it can be some external person. On the third level, you have user roles. User roles are created automatically and are used to grant one or more business roles to specific users. It is very useful when your employees may wear many hats and may combine multiple roles within your organization. This role model provides you with a great flexibility, but also it is very clear from development and security standpoint. SnowDDL is capable of automatically detecting and recreating the invalid views. 
Sometimes when you update the underlying objects, uh, some views might become corrupted and invalid. Even if a view text remains the same, uh, it doesn't matter, such views must be recreated. SnowDDL is capable of detecting such views using the describe command and uh, if uh, describe command fails, SnowDDL will automatically recreate such view. This operation does not require an active warehouse and is essentially free. SnowDTL can help you to simplify the code review, which is especially important if you have thousands of objects to manage. SnowDTL distinguishes safe and unsafe operations. Safe operations are normally the operations which can be reverted safely. Unsafe operations normally cannot be reverted or it is dangerous. When you launch the SnowDDL, you decide which operations should be applied and which operations should only be suggested. The suggested operations are simply outputted to standard output, so you can review it and apply operations manually if you want to. SnowDDL supports an advanced feature, which is called env prefix. It is used to create multiple isolated environments for each developer or even each test run. env prefix can be applied using simple command line option. When env prefix was applied, all objects on the account level are created with a defined prefix. It applies to databases, warehouses, roles, etc. However, the schema objects like tables, views remain the same. It creates a unique situation when every developer has its own version of environment and they can work on different tasks simultaneously while not clashing with each other. So you may forget about any conflicts related to development. SnowDTL implements a very simple dependency management system. All object types are resolved sequentially in a specific order, but all objects within the same type are resolved in parallel, with a few exceptions. In this example, SnowDTL creates multiple databases in parallel first. After that, it creates multiple schemas in parallel. After that, it creates one sequence. And after that, it creates multiple tables in parallel. Basically, all tables are created after all sequences are created. It was very simple so far, but some objects can depend on each other within the same object type. The good example is views. Views can depend on each other. In this case, you need to specify dependencies manually, but SnowDDL will organize such objects in batches and will resolve it for you in the correct order. SnowDTL configuration can be generated dynamically in batches. You are not limited to YAML configs. If you need something more, you can do it. SnowDTL documentation describes the internal architecture and provides you with specific examples of how you can implement your own custom code. And finally, SnowDTL can help you to manage packages for Java and Python user-defined functions. Packages are normally stored in internal stages and are imported directly in the definition of functions. You may store package files directly as a part of SnowDTL config. SnowDTL will upload such files to internal stages for you. It is suitable for relatively small files. Files are uploaded using standard put command and are deleted using standard remove command. That's all for today. If you're interested in SnowDTL, please visit our website and our GitHub repository. Thank you and see you next time.